pick up. They're looking for physical damage. They go for Wraith King. Is is he the man that can stop the Haskar in his tracks? It does okay, but the problem with this hero and what has always been the problem with this hero is, is that you can get quite easily kited. And when you look at the enemy team, when you look at newbies lineup, they've got an Earthshaker, they've got the Queen of Pain Shadow Strike, you've got uh, the Clockwork that can just constantly burn your mana and make you a little bit more tentative. I do think you needed some sort of physical right-click carry that can kind of just trade hits with the Huskar and not worry so much, but this might be a little rough. Is when you talk, when you look at it like this, the Huskar is going to be quite good against the Shadow Fiend until a certain point, because then Weeha will get strong enough where he can finally trade hits. But before that point, you don't have the attack speed to be able to trade into him. And so what do you do? You pop your ultimate and it does like 10 damage. Secret have the greatest time here. They have an observer that's watching almost all of the movement of Nubi. Why? They see the blink is leveled up as well on the Queen of Pain. And they bring all five heroes to try and just, like, all they're doing is making a perimeter fence to keep Newbie Y on top of their tier one tower with 15 seconds left to go. Like, Misery can try and contest for the top room, but it looks like it is going to go the way of the clock. That's the one that's upside for them, but unfortunately for them, this Queen of Pain is not going to get the rune before the Shadow Fiend. And we talked about it yesterday, how much this means, right? It's going to be a free salve and, more importantly, half the level. They're actually going to give it. Like, they'll let it go. Oh, Cobb's still going to get it. So the Clockwork didn't nice. take it, and Secret didn't contest for it. So you're still going to get SC with that bounty rune. All right. For a second there, I was like, really good advantage. Mm -hmm. But she just casually strolls up there. <laughs> Misery assumes that it's taken. Doesn't even bother going to check. And that's a reasonable assumption, in all honesty. Yep. But now this battle begins in mid, where both the SF as well as the Queen of Pain are neck and neck. We don't have it like game number one, where they're a little bit behind. So it's getting actually fairly aggressive on this bottom lane. E as well as Pylai die, really hitting into this Haska. By doing so, it's going to be so difficult to throw out these Burning Spears. Like, what do you do? You don't even have, like, Berserker's blood up just yet, so... No, and this is what you want to do against the Huskar. We saw it yesterday where if you're able to just consistently poke away at this Huskar in the early game and abuse him here and now, then you can kind of take advantage of his uh, laning presence. And the biggest thing is it just kind of forces them in a situation where they have to devote the supports here. And it makes it so that Weeha gets a much more balanced matchup in this mid lane. <laughs> How does that actually work? Uh... For the build you get from the Wraith King, do you go with the Vampiric Aura, knowing that you're going to push a creep wave in to try and counter the amount of damage that Haskar can throw at you? Uh, no, I don't think so. so you, do, you just play it normally, let Poppy do the heal for him. Yeah, exactly. I don't think there's a point right now to go for it. And in this mid lane, the Queen of Pain is going to get the dagger off. Wow, but... are you actually. They're really fighting that one. You kind of have to as a Queen of Pain, but the problem is, is the Shadow Fiend is always going to trade hits with you there because A, he's got the high ground, and B, you're going to have to run a lot sooner than he is. Uh, Misery locked in right now with a Clockwork. Battery Assault doing a lot of work here, but not enough to find the kill. Just forcing Misery down low, but this Clockwork's now out of consumables. He's got one Clarity, and that is all that's available for him. So Misery's got the advantage in this top lane already, just based on HP. Yeah, and Nyx already has really high HP base regen. And he's got the poor man's shield and two tangos still to go. Bottom lane, initiation coming in from EE. That Fisher gonna find much in his space. No cold embrace, however. So the Ray King killing off the Huskar. And now they move over to MR. But they can't go in too deep. The Burning Spear's already ticking down the Wraith King. Not too much, though. Yeah, and he is gonna go for the Vampiric Aura. I guess just so he can trade hit out. And HP regen is gonna be an issue for him. But this is going to push out the lane a little further than you want. They're coming from mid. <laughs> the courier. It waits for its master. Is this clockwork? Okay. The He's... thing is, the clock is... It's not all in, but I can't stress enough how big a voice this time is. If he doesn't get it, and they're even going to wait for the flying one. Oh, that's so much time he just killed. He was doing okay in this top lane. And now you're not doing okay. I'm wondering if he is hoping for a, for a kill there as well. I mean, not just the courier. He no longer has the invis, so the kill is actually impossible. And he's waiting on top of this, maybe for Weeha to come up, but this has just been completely spotted out. The secret knew 100% what was up. 
That is brutal. Because he, he actually just waited the entire time. Mm -hmm. That's Let's just check how many levels he's behind now. That was that cost him a full two levels behind Misery. That's absurd. And Misery's lanes aren't even going to properly push in because that catapult's there. Misery's been throttling this lane so nicely. He's 21 for 11. The highest CS in the board belongs to this Nyx Assassin. And middle lane, maybe Quap can try and make something out of nothing here up against Weeha, but... Oh, that level 2 Shadow Strike, Weeha's down. He's actually going to go for it. SCC! He tried this last time and the bottle charges combined up with the Shadow Strike. Well, there'll be a trade-off at least. And they're still going to go actually up on top lane. Misery, the cold embrace keeps the clockwork alive. That mana burn, not enough work. But oh, Misery's down a giant the HP. They can't finish the job. There's no rocket available. So they chase Misery into the tree lane. He's going to spy Karpus in five seconds time. Ellie's going to find him in the trees. And Misery will end up dropping to this. And that's quite a big kill considering, as you said, like he's up so high in the levels. So he's worth quite a, quite a fair chunk. And it all went to the Wyvern. That's going to help a lot. It's going to kind of reset the lane and make... Le and Lee a little bit happier. What a fun combination of names. <laughs> Try saying that five times faster during a team fight. <sighs> but the Earthshaker, he's camping on this SF now, and that solo kill helps out quite a bit. Fissure. SC is not ready to go yet. Like he screams forward now, has to blink himself away, bottle charge up, and come in again later on when he knows he's got both Scream as well as Sonic Wave available. Yeah, you don't want to get a little bit too over aggressive. Puppies waiting in the wings, making sure that there's no sort of trade here. <laughs> this Huskar's got nothing. There's a nightmare on SC in the mid, but with M with MR watching over, there's no real problem there at all. Yeah. Is it almost worth switching the lanes up? This Clockworks now coming back up to the top lane, but this Huskar has six for two CS. He is level two. It's a level two Huskar five minutes into the game. They could have thought about dodging. They, 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 yeah, they been a, it would have been a pretty reasonable idea because he's not getting anything in this bottom area. But you have to make sure that the clock is in at least somewhat ganking shape before you go for something like this. Well, they've, they've switched it before that point. So Haskell's now going to take all the farm on top and push Misery off the lane. But Misery's in ganking shape. He just hit level 6. Six minutes into the game. Instantly into Vendetta and wants to try and come in for mid. Even with the death, I think this is perfectly fine for him to go for the gank like this. He can and... go for clock. Pilot Eye's got that level 2 nuke available with a stun to connect. Misery bottling up so he's got the mana burn. And there's the work. But Cogs, defensive is there. Puppy can't reach him, can't see him. So can't attack him. 27 HP just kind of saunters off. Fortunately for Team Secret that they weren't able to get that kill. And Poppy, he's just trying to soak up levels right now while Weeha switches with him into the jungle. Uh, SC's got to be considering this. If he blinks screen Sonic Waves, he gets an instant kill. Uh, meanwhile, the house guard dies up on top lane. Uh, that brain sap actually destroys him. He just can't go anywhere. Bottom lane, you might actually lose Ellie. He's going to fly himself over the tree line, but he's keeping up with him. And there goes your Wraith Fire Blast. Got the Two cold attacks embrace. should do it. The uh, burn. Okay, yeah, there's your Cold Embrace going to work. No level 6 on the clockwork, so no rebuttal, even though Eternal Envy's out of mana. He does have the Enchanted Mango, so almost at all times he should have mana for the ultimate anyways, once he hits 6. Mm -hmm. He actually gets deal. trapped inside the cogs. Okay, Battery is going to go to work. He's on level 6, and EE losing his life on the bottom lane to the clockwork. Say hello to basically almost level 6. Puppy couldn't get there in time. And even when he did, he didn't have the mana after the TP for the Shallow Grave. He wasn't quite 6 yet. You can't afford to play... Make that play, and most importantly, Toby, he lost the mango. The lack of mango really cost him there. Game's over. If there's no mango, there's no game. I have never had a mango in my life before. Really? Yep. Are you talking about inside the game or legitimately no, just, real I've life? Never had, I've Dyer's never. I don't know what a mango tastes like, but <laughs> on a side note, this Huskar continues to get completely shut out. Uh, every single time he moves forward, he just gets brain sapped, and the potential is there for death. Oh, he does have a magic down. wand, but what does that really do for you here? Fissure, right now on Paladai with a sonic wave, he dies so quickly. And the sentry ward reveals the fact that he's actually sitting right on the edge of vision, but they need an extra stun to blink away at the same time as the Vendetta from Misery connects. It's always that toss-up too with the Nyx, isn't it? Like, do you attack with your, vende with your Vendetta against a blink hero, or do you just say, you know, I can't get the stun? I, as well as the damage. I gotta choose one or the other. Uh, in that scenario, it's kind of difficult. Like, you can't... 
you want to make sure that you have enough damage to guarantee that it's like a one race kill, but that's min maxing it maybe a little bit too much. What? Clockwork. Just trying to play around with the Wraith King, and he's going to play pretty hard with SC coming in with the rotation. Pandai has arrived, but that Wraith King is sticking out the Shadow Strike at the moment, and that'll trigger out that reincarnation. It's a very long cooldown, though, for level one, so they want to make this really worth the trade. Like you keep EE alive, but can you get more? The Clockworks are looking good. The Screaming Shadow Strike is going to slow him down once again. And with a Cog Burn, you can take out the next mana. Starts the Battery Assault. Pylai die. Oh, look at the Battery Assault. Let's do the work with the Scream from the Queen of Pain. They're going to catch out to the Cold Embrace. Keeps the Clockwork alive. And SC gets himself a double kill. So the Reincarnation triggers, yet you still lose the Wraith King plus the Bane on top. Really well played by Newbie Young. They just bring everybody and their mother over for that fight. They understand in that situation, you have to kill them twice there. They've got enough heroes down there to do it too. And those are pretty high priority pickups. And most importantly, it slows down the Wraith King further. And this is now his second death. The first one was the solos of the Clockwork, but this one matters even more because he leveled up his ultimate for that. Most Wraith King players, almost all of them, should be waiting for it. Because if you die at an inopportune moment, what are you going to get out of it? And you need some sort of rebuttal. Uh, Huska stunned up, poison stings up. Misery trying to be aggressive, but that's Splinter Blast doing so much damage. The raises from Weeha won't reach, but now with Wyvern Nightmare up, they have two more raises available. There's one, and there's the Dazzle Wave Heal doing a lot of work. But the, oh, the clockwork clock shots in! The Fissure! The Three Man Fissure! They lock in two inside the cop! Pilot eyes down! And a triple kill for SC! And the clockwork will mop them up! Four heroes from Seeker and Lost for the price of a Wyvern! Inject money, inject experience, inject adrenaline into Newbie Y! Now they've got to keep their heads. <laughs> That's what the panel was saying at the end of game one. What went wrong after Nubi Y got such a good start? That is the dream fight for Nubi Y. I mean, get hyped. They were so far behind at some points where it just looked like the Queen of Pain. Yeah, she was able to get the solo kill, but the safe laner wasn't doing anything. Their off laner wasted a lot of time, but you persevered. You have a situation like that where you just land spell after spell, combo after combo. It's, it's not gonna... even the big ones, like it wasn't, like you didn't have Echo Slam, you didn't have Curse, you didn't use Sonic Wave, yet you still took that fight. Oh, that Fissure was, that was disgusting. The Fissure and the Cogs. Uh, it's not disgusting, it's beautiful, and they're gonna go for more. Up to Jackie, Emma, there's your Curse, gonna he be doesn't committed. doesn't have the ultimate. The Fissure is down, the Echo Slam, where's your extra damage? With the Totem Stun, and maybe EE, 54, he's so low, and the Clockwork Rocket kill secures it. Misery, he's got his start up in five seconds time. The Cold Embrace is going to make this very, very difficult. Oh, yeah. And the Splinter Blast is back off cooldown too. Misery moves away from the Creek Waves. He's going to get hit by it. And the Spy Carapus, MR, oh, the gets the that. hell out of there. He gets stunned up and dies. They can't give any more. But the Clockwork as well as SC, they're rotating and looking for Weeha, and they've found him. The hook shot down, they can keep him in position, or can they? He goes in deep into the side, but the Battery Assault and the attack. That's now SC going 7-1 on this Queen of Pain. No delayed Orc at this game. He's up to 5.7k in the net worth. So much better of a game. He was able to get that solo kill again in that mid lane. That bottom fight, he was the one that mopped up so much of his team's combos. Being able to get that scream, getting a triple kill, and you're right, this is a much better Orchid timing. It'll hit around 14, 15 is where, you, where you'd where you expect it, and I mean, Team Secret, they're struggling to keep a foothold in this game. Your safe lane carry, or the one that was meant to be your carry anyways, Eternal Envy, who went to the off lane, he doesn't have enough. He's only level 7 right now. That's quite underleveled for 12 minutes into a game for a core. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really been able to really find his foothold, and his ultimate is still down. Newbie Young Newbie abusing that every single time, and the next ultimate for this Wraith King is going to be fairly significant because you want to fight around it, but with him being so under farm and so leveled, what does it really matter when you revive? Yep. Should flag another thing too. One, the fact with all this going on, Haskar kept farming up. He's almost co completed that armor of his, but SC also had a big stack to take out. He did it in combination with the Earthshaker, but this, this gives Queen of Pain a level 2 Sonic Wave already. 13 minutes into the game, and you're saying like the 13-40 minute timing, it's right on the money because of that big stack. It was a triple to almost quad stack available for them. And they're, pre they're preparing to go again. They just want to keep the pressure up. They've got the, they've got the hook on the clockwork too. Available again. Do you well, want to try to do? Evade? Like, do you defend if you're secret? Do you have to let this tower go? I 
I mean, you've got Eternal Envy here. He's got the ultimate up. Oh, shot. They found one. They found Puppy. He can shell like Graver. No. Yeah, he can. The battery assault couldn't control him enough. But now, can he get away? As he's waiting here, the fear check catches three again. Sonic waves available. The double stun, however, from Misery. Buy the space. While we are, the Raiders from inside the Fog of War doing the work with a haste rune from the Queen of Pain. She's able to escape, but now with the Sun and Huskar, is this really the dream for Dead? It will attack in. Huskar is fairly tanky, however. Difficult to kill off, and they just have to let it go. So it's a one-for-one -one trade off. You don't want to go for that fight if you're the Huskar either. You don't know where Pylite Die is. He's got the Fiend's Grip, and he's got that Brain Sap available, and that's the killer right there, right? It's the Brain Sap. Weeha's got enough souls where he can right click you down too, so you don't want to get over aggressive there. Fortunately for Newbie, they were able to get out with just losing uh, one hero. Misery? That's really early to throw out the spike character. He did it right in front of Newbie Y as well. So SC just waited it out. He knew he had the advantage and he knew he had the support behind him. Misery gives free gold. Without that spike carapace, you just delay the fissure. He thought it was going to come in. Pre preps it, but doesn't even matter. And Team Secret, they're just losing more heroes than they should in these mini skirmishes. They might lose more bottom lane. Weeha you can't afford to lose Wee here. Hook shot and Weeha, well, it's a point blank one. The fish will connect too. You'll have to run the clockwork around. The echo slam damage ensures the kill. Clockwork will take it. And now he's a very short distance away from even having something like a full blight mail up for a clockwork. And the hero that we focus so much of our attention on, the Huskar in this game, hasn't really even had to contribute anything. Now he's got a steady timing for his armlet, so you can finally start to see him enter the fray. But he just hasn't had to because his team's been playing so well without him. This combination, this Earthshaker, Queen of Pain, Clockwork, they've made so much happen for their team. What's even better is, because all this is happening right now, you're delaying everything on Team Secret. You talk about Huskar getting a movement through in items, he's got the armor up. If he gets into Heaven's Halberd, with these quick deaths on SF, like you got Weeha who's 0-4 on the SF, you're never going to find that true hit anytime soon at least. So if you bring in that invasion as well, like what do you do? Like. Does Wraith King now try and build? Like, he has to go for the Blade Mail, right? Like, he's, he's a Blade Mail Blink Dagger hero. Yeah, uh, but then does, when you're does, playing... Does Weeha get the mech? Is this the... Is this the way? No, I don't think you can really contest newbie youth anymore in teamfights. You've got the Winner's Curse up now for the Winter Wyvern. This is something that we haven't seen yet. And Weeha has to just kind of focus on himself rather than going for the team plays. But this might even be a smoke into Roshan attempts. Well, they have a double newbie. damage rune to help them on their way. Yeah, you but can that... go for you can go for the kill, and then the focusing the mid this mid area. Eternal envy. Can He's they not burn? The target you want though. Can they burn through his reincarnation twice? That's a big question. Oscar jumping forward, gonna get stunned up pretty early on. Double stun as well with misery waiting on the hillside, but the cold embrace up the Oscar. You've also got in the mid lane SCB controlled up by Pylite Die. The Fiendry will keep him there, but it's Jackie, the shallow grave, still alive. And remember, you've still got reincarnation to get through. Puppy will get the physical damage out from the wave, so it's a one for uh, 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 real reincarnation. Carnation only trade off, and even the clockwork cold embrace is trying to keep him up. But this is not the dream, newbie. Why, in fact, this is a nightmare. You don't have your queen of pain during the fight, she has to solo up the bane herself. Left out of the fight, and you lose three heroes initiating up into an area you have no vision on. Your queen of pain is 9 1 and okay, 3, and he's well, gonna kill misery for sure. <laughs> gonna be godlike with that, and that kind of makes things a little bit better, but. Think about it like this, so Pylite Die dies, and he, if you didn't watch the fight or what happened at all, he manages to sleep the Queen of Pain before she can get her Orchid off onto him, and he realizes he's in a situation where he's most likely going to die, but he just occupies her, her time as much as she can, just so she can't re-engage on the rest of his team, sacrifices himself by using the ultimate full duration with nobody near him, makes that fight okay, and the armlet toggle just wasn't there. Like, the Bane wasn't there, so the primary threat for the Huskar wasn't even in that fight, and they still were able to make that work. I almost look at Secret like, with Signs of Life. Man, I, I look at your first phrase during that fight. Is this really the target? Like, you want to go on a Wraith King who has reincarnation. At that point, the reincarnation was worth it. 100% worth it. He still got it on cooldown for another 180 seconds. So it's a long time away. Top lane, uh, Weeha. He'll survive through this. The Nightmare comes in from Pile I Die. 
but he doesn't have Fiend's Grip available, and Weeha is in no position to fight for this. And because of that, because of the flagging, the positioning, Nubi Y, now they go in for Roshan. They can't walk out of this pit, however. There's a dire Observe Ward on the cliffside, so they have to stay in the pit, but they just try and find the pickoff over on Misery first. Able to claim it. He'll buy his four-star recipe before death, but now you know there's no Nyx Assassin inside the pit. The Wyvern tanks the damage. Huskar Please doesn't get no. He got bashed. He got bashed. He got yeah, bashed. You know. He died to Roshan. Oh god! You can see her coming from a mile away. Yo. Oh. This, <laughs> I this guy's got to be tilted at this point. They're even gonna oh. lose their Winter Wyvern for this one. Yeah, but they claim the Bane at the same time. You the can't got a solo kill on it, but but you can't afford to lose this Aegis. Well, heck, will they? SCC still waiting here. His Sonic waves off cooldown. You've got MR coming in from behind. He can fissure in, catching out two. The rocket gives the vision, so SC knows what he's up against. They know Eternal Envy doesn't have that ultimate either. Wait for it. The Spike Carapace is up from Jackie, and now the whole shot in! Angus Moore's in the hand of Quinny Bay with the Echo Slam! Carving apart Seeker! SC standing his ground! It's a double kill right now for the Clockwork! And SC no more! No more, please! The heart cannot take it! 22 to 10, uh, the big Roche fight! Misery wants something to make this a little bit more worth it! He's running with the Vendetta forward! But there's nothing... Oh, wait, he is! He's gonna find the Queen of Pain in the tree line! One if second for the blitz, he's got it! Oh, no! She's away! By the skin of her teeth, she'll survive! The I mean, BKB is picked up, and what a fight! Can you say wombo combo? They knew it was coming too. Eternal Envy triggers the blade mail before they go in, the smart thing to do, but they're not able to pick up the Aegis at the last second. He doesn't have the ultimate for that. Team Secret, it just looks so beautiful as a setup. Like, how many things could go wrong for Newbie Y? They lose their Winter Wyvern. GIU accidentally dies to Roshan. Like, that was the perfect setup for them, but... It was just a, a trap the entire time. I haven't seen a Roshan deny like that since Admiral Baldog killed himself a dream hack. That's the first one that I've seen that was unintentional. <laughs> in For my competitive casting career. <laughs> that was the first time I've seen that happen. Uh, There's there nothing you can call that by just... It's just a, a flub. Sometimes yeah. those things happen. Yeah. Roshan Bash, RNG, Queen of Pain now takes out that top tower with BKB, Orchid as well as Aegis. They can look towards the middle lane. Clockwork with an Invis rune sets up on Jackie. 18 seconds until he's got his reincarnation up. Puppy can find that time, but they go further towards the Bane. Hook shot down. The stun's on Weeha. Nubi Y, they're going to go for more. This is now the sixth death for Weeha as well. Two heroes down for Secret. No buyback for the SF. They may lose more. Misery's coming out. He'll attack into the clockwork, but that's a very tanky clockwork. No hookshot available, and he's actually locked in by the fissure. He can't move down to Misery. He'll hide himself inside the pit. The Misery showed himself, and now Newbie Y will try and pressure into the tier two at least. The fact that they're doing this without Jia Jia, like they haven't had their Huskar at all for the majority of these engagements. He's 0, 4, and 3 right now. He's contributed to 3 kills. Most of those are in the early game where the spear people. He gets the Orchid over on Misery. He used the Observe Ward on the cliffside to see the perfect rotation. And Misery's down for the count. This 44 guy's... seconds. His movement's wonderful. And this is his signature hero. He's Queen just... of Pain is comfort. The panel questioned why they picked Queen of Pain in the first in the first two. This is the answer. Because they knew he was going to solo kill Weeha and Obviously, it, it, it was just fate. <laughs> it's got to happen. He's got a BKB and a gem now, so this Nyx Assassin is no longer scary to him at all. He can just blink in, pop the BKB, or get the Nyx. That's a free hero down. What do you go next? Like, he's already looking at that decision point. Like, do you try and kite the Wraith King more and go into something like a Shiva's Guard? You do can you go think the... maybe Hex is, is a big point? You, you, can can go... Go... you can go the... S4 route and go for the Assault Curse just to turn yourself into a physical damage dealer and make yourself incredibly tanky. It would definitely help with Newbie claiming more of these, of like the positions on the map, taking out these tier two towers yeah. and potential for the high ground siege. Because I suppose that's also our next line of thought. How does Newbie actually end this game? You got a good start. You're 22 minutes in. You've got over 10,000 net worth as well as experience advantage going your way. How do you end this? I, they were definitely going to try to get the Aegis on the Huskar and go high, but that, uh, with that plan ending, maybe this, that was the best possible scenario for them. Like, yeah, they lose their Huskar, 
but in some roundabout way, they get the Aegis on the Queen of Pain instead. Double TPs coming bottom lane. In fact, triple TPs. The clock works the first one. Hook shots for we No oh, BKB on him. range of the tower. He's only got Shadow Blade and the Sonic Wave. They waited out. He actually baited for the Shallow Grave. Canceling the animation. Now the Sonic Wave with the Echo Slam. Oh my. Secret beat. Told absolute new one. Pylai dies down as well. And Marl will go on a killing spree as it's Earthshaker. The perfect combo. The beautiful synergy. And Nubi Y take a four for zero fight, and this will now mean another tower. Who needs an AC? You just kill all of Secret. I don't want to discount anything that the Winter Wyvern or this Huskar have done this entire game, but this Queen of Pain Earthshaker Clockwork combination, they've just hooked up for so many different kills. Look at their individual scores alone. Usually that doesn't really tell the story, but for this game it definitely does. What they've been able to do, just the three of them, this entire game, has been unbelievable so is, far. Is he going again? Like if Clockwork can rocket and get the vision, he rockets up to look. He's on the search for Eternal Envy, who is, he is on the wrong side of home. He has turned to the dark side right now, which is ironic because Hook's considering it's the Radiant side. And he's going for a Radiance build on the Wraith King. This is how he believes they can come back in this game with a Radiance recipe sitting on the Wraith King. He's so far behind though. He had to go for the Radiance recipe first. Here they go top. Blink. The Orc is over on Misery again. No spike character time. It's these three shot. once again. Him. They are the trio of Bash Brothers. The Amigos bringing down Misery and Weeha. And they're looking towards Puppy straight away again. Oscar, he could just life break down. Puppy is completely isolated, running forward into Newbie Y. And it's a double kill for SC. Man, they may not even get a chance to take out the racks at this race. Secret may call GG already. I feel so bad for Ellie and Giacchia because they're just running behind. They're just like, wait, guys. I want to be Yeah, we're quiet. coming. <laughs> we don't all have blinks. And like the fourth and fifth people in the conversation don't really say anything. They just sit there. Toby, the that sounded time. a little bit too familiar, but <laughs> they're going to get this tower down. <laughs> they're going to get the racks. <laughs> the Shadow Queen is still dead. Doesn't have buyback either. The Shiva's is completed on the Queen of Pain. She's just... <sighs> So monstrously huge now. Eternal Envy nowhere he, near enough farm. He, he sold the Radiance Recipe to pick up the armlet for this fight. But Misery, he's orking it up. They've taken the mid-racks now. Newbie White, all they got to do is get out of here. With a defensive cogs, they can do it. They're force stopping forward. In fact, Secret, they're coming out. Newbie are posturing to you don't fight. Want to they're looking for, for this. Misery, but no! The BKB feeds group here, but SEC, they're not doing enough damage. And the Hawk does it again! The Sonic Wave damage will spill out the Puppy, but do they have enough control with the Fissure? Yeah, Ray Thief's going to go down. Down, but they've taken out two. We are still fighting the wave and the glimmer making it impossible to finish the job. And they can turn onto a tunnel envy. Burn, baby, burn underneath the Huskar searing arrows. But it's the clockwork. He becomes a voyeur. It's just the Huskar to triple kill. SGG. Newbie Y will force a third deciding game 36 to 10. There were some moments where you wondered, would Newbie Y have the same problem as game one? Overconfidence into overextension, but didn't happen. They just kept pummeling Secret down and down again. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they showed why they were.